So the second numerical method that I will introduce you to is the QR algorithm with shifts, which, as you might expect, is really just the QR algorithm with uh, something known as a shift. And so to start things off, we can start off in two ways. The first thing that we can do is we can start off our QR algorithm with shifts by just doing the first step of the QR algorithm, which is computing a QR matrix decomposition for our A matrix, uh, A0 in this case, and then computing a similar matrix, A1, using R0 and Q0. Or we can introduce this idea of a shift right from the beginning. So we can take A0 and subtract off uh, some scalar value uh, S by our identity matrix, which is just going to shift the values of our diagonal, because that's ideally where our uh, eigenvalues are going to be. Remember, this is what we're expecting after doing a number of iterations with just the normal QR algorithm is these uh, zeros below the diagonal or something close to zero below the diagonal, and most importantly, our eigenvalues along the diagonal of uh, whatever nth similar matrix we end up computing. Okay, and uh, so we'll do a QR matrix composition of that shifted uh, matrix, and then what we'll do is we'll compute a similar matrix using R0 and Q0, and then re-adding in that shift. Then just uh, more so in general, we will go through and for each subsequent iteration after zero, so you can start off doing the shifting from the beginning or you can do it after uh, the uh, first, uh, after computing the first similar matrix, but then in general after this point we will do this shifting every single time to compute each subsequent uh, similar matrix. So we'll just com you know take AN, uh, subtract off the identity matrix times some scalar shift, compute a QR matrix decomposition of that shifted matrix, and then we will compute a similar matrix uh, using R and N and QN, and then re-add in that shift. And the idea here is that this is going to speed everything up. I know this might be a little bit confusing, um, but the, the, the whole reason why we're doing the, these shifts is because it's going to speed things up. And so really, where does this shift come from? How do we choose a shift I've kind of just thrown this shift at all of you um, who are listening, and you might not know how to choose a shift, where the shift comes from, why the shifting uh, is uh, going to improve anything at all. And so uh, let's discuss this shift a little bit. Okay, so how do we go about actually choosing a shift that's going to speed things up? Well, first we want to choose a new shift with each iteration. So each shift is going to be uh, special, I guess, uh, to each subsequent similar matrix that we compute. Secondly, uh, we're going to want to choose a shift that is close to uh, the value of an eigenvalue for our uh, original A matrix. And that might seem kind of stupid. And to me, that also seems kind of stupid. How am I supposed to choose a value or choose a shift that's close to the value of one of our eigenvalues? Isn't the whole point of this to, to compute our eigenvalues? As it turns out, we have a really useful tool to help us, you know, make a good educated guess at what one of our eigenvalues is going to be. We can take a look at the end result of what we expect here with this AN matrix where we're going to have our eigenvalues converge uh, on the diagonal of the matrix. And so you might think, why don't we just choose one of the values along our diagonal to be our shift. And that's actually not a bad thought because in theory, with each new uh, iteration uh, of this these AN matrices that we compute, our values along the diagonal should be better and better uh, or, or closer and closer to actual you know eigenvalues. But that's not necessarily the best way of going. You could do that method, but it's not the best way of going. The other thing to think about is that this is, a, in theory, should be an upper triangular matrix. And so the last column of this uh, matrix is going to be the only complete column, meaning that there aren't you know, zeros below the diagonal. And so in theory, this should actually converge to being something like an eigenvector. So we could use our Rayleigh quotient to predict the eigenvalue for this corresponding eigen vector. But we don't even really need to do that because down here along our diagonal we're going to have uh, the corresponding eigenvalue to that eigenvector in theory. And so in a perfect world if that last column converges to being an eigenvector then 
the Rayleigh quotient is just this last value. So here is the entire uh, QR algorithm with shifts for computing eigenvalues. You can see we're defining this eigQR shifts. It's accepting an A matrix. You can see we have a couple of different quargs here. So we have a reference eigenvalue that's going to be the reference index for our eigenvalue for computing uh, you know, precision and things like that. Then we're going to choose a shift index, and this is going to allow us to choose different values for our shift. We'll, we'll explore that one uh, later on, not necessarily in this example, but we'll use that later. And then we also have verbose so that you can, you know, if you want to rerun this code for yourself, uh, it'll just print out each similar matrix as things get computed. Things are starting out no different than the QR algorithm where we're going to compute a initial similar matrix. You can see I'm opting for I'm opting for this uh, first or, 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 or top method where we're not doing any shifts from the beginning. So we're just going to compute an initial similar matrix and then introduce the shifts for each subsequent computation of a similar matrix. So everything greater than n equals 1. Uh, n is going to be the number of iterations here. Uh, L i is just going to be um, what we're using as our reference in this case. So just like with the QR algorithm, between one iteration to the next, we are going to compare uh, the values along the diagonal of each similar matrix to see what level of precision we have with them. That level of precision is going to help us out with uh, the difference. So the difference is, uh, at the beginning is just a placeholder. And so uh, while our difference is uh, less precise than on order of 10 to the minus 32, or we've done less than... Uh, 100 iterations, we're going to keep going through and computing more and more similar matrices. And the reason why I put that uh, that other constraint on there to stop after 100 uh, similar matrices is that the whole idea of this is that we're you know supposed to speed things up, and, and it actually does. You'll see that in a moment. But anyways, uh, we define our shift as the identity matrix by whatever uh, value along the diagonal we choose to be our shift, because again, in theory, um, the whole idea is that we want to choose something close to an eigenvalue, so I, I, I kind of want to compare all the different uh, values along the diagonal here and choosing that as our shift to see what kind of better results that we end up getting. And so that you know that's just going to be based off of our index. In this case, uh, it's just going to be the last uh, value along our diagonal is going to be our shift because that's going to be our uh, Rayleigh quotient. Then we're going to actually do the shift. We're going to compute a similar matrix and then reintroduce that shift, bump our iterations by one, compute the difference between the last eigenvalue of our previous iteration with this current iteration, and then we're going to reset uh, that, that, that value. And so in this case, using the, 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 you know, the built-in defaults for the quarks, it's going to be the last uh, position along our diagonal. Then we're just going to strip all the values off of the diagonal of the last similar matrix we compute, return those eigenvalues, and the total number of iterations. Then here's all the motivating code that uh, we're going to run right here, and... We're going to actually compute these eigenvalues three different times using different reference eigenvalues here. So we're going to, our shift is going to be the last value along our diagonal, but I just want to show you that the total number of iterations for us to reach uh, 10 to the minus 32 precision is going to be different depending on which value uh, along our diagonal we use as our reference uh, for each one of the different iterations that we have right here. So just to remind everybody, uh, this is our original A matrix. It's the same A matrix that we've used with the uh, QR algorithm with showing that similar matrices have um, the same eigenvalues and with the Rayleigh quotient and all that. And you can see that uh, this time it takes us 34 similar matrices or 34 iterations for us to get uh, to uh, precision on order of 10 to the minus 32. You can see we have something that's close to... Uh, to uh, you know, perfect zeros below the diagonal, and not quite again because we're doing this, you know, this numerically. But when we strip those eigenvalues off the diagonal, we get 159 and some change, 35.59 and some change, and minus 29.8 and some change after 34 iterations. If we do this though using the uh, second value along the diagonal, um, you can see it also takes 34 iterations, and we get um, you know the same eigenvalues as before, and so 34 iterations. Uh, compared to 190 some using QR without shifts is much, much faster. But this is where things get really uh, important. Lastly, you can see that, that uh, using that last value as our reference, you can see that that last eigenvalue along the diagonal actually converges the fastest, reaching precision on order of 10 to the minus 32 after just five iterations. So, logical question you might ask is what happens if we 
are changing our shift to be those different values along the diagonal. And so what this code is going to do is we're going to iterate over uh, the, the indexes for our shifts and uh, the reference eigenvalue for computing the differences from back here uh, to, to you know where this is all going to stop on order of 10 to the minus 32. And I'm going to show you uh, through producing a, uh, a bit of a heat map that uh, that last value uh, along the diagonal is actually the best because it is a really quotient of that last column. And so here's a diagram of what that's going to produce. And let me briefly explain what this shows us. On the top, uh, we have our shift index. So uh, the, you know, the, the, the first value along our diagonal, the second value along the diagonal, the third value along our diagonal, that's going to be our shift. On the left here on the y-axis, we have uh, the reference eigenvalue for what we're going to be using to compute those different levels of precision. So uh, 0, 1, and 2 on that case, all just referencing the position of our uh, eigenvalues. And so, so this hopefully makes more sense for you. Um, you know, uh, we're going to be choosing uh, each one of these values along our diagonal to be our reference point in computing the difference from one iteration to the next. And that's what I mean by the uh, reference eigenvalue. Now, what you can see with this heat map is uh, the total number of iterations. And so you can see that the, the darker it is, the l less iterations there are. And um, the brighter it is, the more iterations there are, and that's why I'm having things stop after a hundred iterations, because this could just keep going for a while. You can see with the exception of choosing the first value along a diagonal as the shift, and our reference being the last value along the diagonal, you can see that kind of works all right, but it's not even a question at this point. The best value to choose is our shift, that's going to make things converge the fastest is the last eigenvalue along the diagonal. It's this last uh, column that you can see right here. And it's obviously going to converge the fastest, like we saw uh, in the, with the terminal, um, when for that last value along the diagonal as well, when we use that as our reference. Okay, but uh, we can rerun this with a completely different matrix with completely different eigenvalues. You can see uh, we have something sort of similar going on, although it, we still see the same thing. Choosing that last value along the diagonal to be our shift is the fastest converging, no matter which reference we use. Here, even in this last or third case, uh, you can see that it by far beats using the other two values along the diagonal as the shift. So, so using this last value along the diagonal uh, as our shift is going to make things substantially faster. Now, deciding on which uh, value along the diagonal you want to reference is going to be entirely up to you. For this function, there's probably a better way of computing like maybe like an average difference um, so that you can incorporate all the eigenvalues, but the, the focus of this function is not to is not to create like a, like a real uh, working function for computing uh, eigenvalues with uh, the QR algorithm with shifts. It's to explore the QR algorithm with shifts, and that's why we stop it at 100 iterations, and why we're exploring things using the uh, using one index at a time, and also in these heat maps with uh, choosing one different shift at a time as well. But I kind of just pulled. Uh, this shift out of thin air, and I don't really like that. And in reality, the QR algorithm with shifts is a very, very good method, uh, and and kind of a tricky method as well. It's kind of in the weeds for computing eigenvalues. And so let me uh, just briefly say that there are other methods for computing eigenvalues that, in some cases and in a lot of cases, are are better methods. But then there are also some worse, or in my opinion, older or or, or not as good methods.